In 2015, the Chicago Cubs, a franchise that hadn't made it to the postseason since 2008, had made it. But how exactly did we get there? Back in 2011, after the Red Sox collapsed, general manager Theo Epstein would move on to sign a contract with the Cubs, becoming president of the organization and lead the front office over on the north side of Chicago. For the next three seasons, 2012, 2013, and 2014, the Cubs were awful. They were just a miserable team, but it was all part of the plan. Epstein didn't come in with the intent on fixing the franchise overnight, but rather within a few years' time, acquiring and developing young talent that would eventually blossom into Major League success, which is exactly what happened. In 2015, things finally came together for the Cubs. Their young core was finally all together at the big league level, veterans like John Lester and Jake Arrieta joined the rotation, and the bullpen was solid as they win 97 games. Despite such a great record, they still finished in third place behind the 98-win Pittsburgh Pirates and 100 win St. Louis Cardinals. None of that ended up mattering to the Cubs, though, as they'd go on to beat the Pirates in the wildcard game and then the Cardinals in the NLDS, knocking out both division rivals before ultimately getting swept by the Mets in the NLCS. Disappointing way to end things, but this was just the beginning of a great run in the north side of Chicago. The 2016 Chicago Cubs were just elite. I mean, it can't get much better than the way this team was and how they were built. The offense, led by MVP Chris Bryant and first baseman Anthony Rizzo, was incredible. The bullpen was solid again, and then added a Roldis Chapman before the trade deadline. And as for the starting rotation? It was just masterful. The 2016 Chicago Cubs starting rotation featured five starters who threw at least 166 innings, all with an ERA under four. Everything about that team was just perfect, or at least as close to perfect as you can get, with the Cubs going on to win the World Series for the first time in over a century. The curse. It was finally over. And with how young and talented this team was, this was looking like just the beginning of a dynasty. Before I get any further, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Over 75% of my watch time has been from people who aren't subscribed. So hit that button along with the bell for post notifications. Okay, back to the video. 2017 was another successful year. Although they'd win 11 less games than they did the year prior, the National League Central Division was theirs, finishing six games ahead of the second place Milwaukee Brewers, going back to the postseason for the third year in a row, this time to take on the Nationals in the NLDS. After a back and forth series between the two teams, the Cubs would prevail in game five, punching a ticket to the NLCS for the third straight year where they would be facing the Dodgers, the very team they beat in the NLCS to win the pennant the year before. Unfortunately for the Cubs, the Dodgers were not playing around this time, winning the first three games of the series and eventually winning it in five, going to the World Series and ending Chicago's season. Not ideal, but the team was still very talented heading into 2018. But little did we all know at the time, 2018 was the beginning of the end for this Cubs core. In 2018, they were good again, just consistently winning the entire year. But things were a little different this time around, as the Brewers were finally coming together as a team to start winning again with the help of newly acquired and eventual 2018 NL MVP Christian Yelich. The Brewers fought the Cubs for the division until the very end, and I mean the very end, to the point where 162 games couldn't decide a division winner, so there would be a tiebreaker game taking place at Wrigley Field to decide who'd take home the division. The Cubs had always been known for taking over Miller Park in Milwaukee when playing the Brewers. Despite being on the road, Cubs fans would typically fill the place to root their boys on. The opposite never really took place, but it finally did on October 1st, 2018 during the tiebreaker game. A ton of Brewers fans flocked over to Wrigley Field and through the gates to see their team win the game 3-1, and clinch the National League Central, forcing the Cubs to settle for a wildcard spot and take on the Colorado Rockies for a winner-take-all game. The Cubs may have lost their division, but they still had a shot. The Rockies had something to say about that, though, going on to win by one run in extra innings to end the Cubs' season. We may not have realized it at the time, but this was the end of the Cubs' success, at least from this core. 2019, although not necessarily awful, was certainly not good as the Cubs would finish in third place in their division with just 84 wins. And unlike 2015, where they still ended up making it despite finishing in third place, things were different this time around, as the Cubs would miss out on October baseball for the first time since 2014. The pandemic happened, things were delayed, a shortened season was able to be played, with the Cubs having a very forgettable 34-26 season, having their year ended by the Marlins in the wildcard round. 
Not too long after this, Theo Epstein would step down from his position on the team, going on to be hired by Major League Baseball to be a consultant in January of 2021. After the 2020 season, the Cubs decided not to bring back Kyle Schwarber, and he hasn't played a game for the team since. 2021 was another forgettable year for the Cubbies. After starting out strong with a 38-28 record in June, they'd go on to play to a 31-63 record the rest of the way, finishing the year 71-91, of course missing the postseason again. During the year, the Cubs, realizing how doomed they were, understood they needed to start getting some assets for their impending free agent agents, trading longtime Cub Anthony Rizzo to the Yankees, Javier Baez to the Mets, Chris Bryant to the San Francisco Giants, and this was just the beginning of the teardown. The offseason heading into 2022 was a painful one for Cubs fans. I mean, I'm sure a lot of them knew it was coming, but it's still painful to see your guys officially leave, which is exactly what happened. Javier Baez would sign a big contract with the Detroit Tigers before the lockout, and after the lockout ended, Anthony Rizzo would sign with the Yankees, which was followed by Chris Bryant signing a big contract with the Colorado Rockies. So bam, three of the biggest name Cubs were now gone, and the regression and teardown only continued. They did sign Japanese player Seiya Suzuki before the 2022 season, who ended up doing pretty well along with Marcus Stroman, but overall, the Cubs were just not good, and as for longtime Cub catcher Wilson Contreras along with outfielder Ian Happ, their time as Cubs was nearing its end, and they knew it too, hugging it out during an emotional day at Wrigley Field in what was then believed to be their last home game before inevitably getting traded an inevitable trade that never ended up actually happening, with the two staying put the rest of the 2022 season. Looking back, yeah, they probably should have traded at least Contreras, someone who ended up signing a big contract with the Cardinals. Bam, that's another core piece from 2016 that was now gone. 2016 MVP Chris Bryant? Gone. 2018 MVP candidate Javier Baez? Gone. Longtime Cub legend Anthony Rizzo? Gone. And now longtime star catcher Wilson Contreras? Gone. Veteran pitchers John Lackey, Jake Arrieta, and John Lester retired. Jason Hayward? Not as good anymore and off the team. So now what? Well, one thing has gotten more and more clear as time goes on, which is that the Cubs president of baseball operations, Jed Hoyer, wants to win, and wants to win ASAP. 2019 National League MVP Cody Bellinger has struggled big time for a while now, struggling enough to the point where the Dodgers decided not to bring him back and make him a free agent. He's clearly not the same hitter he once was, but the Cubs went out and got him signing him to a one-year deal for $16 million. It's basically a deal that shows the Cubs are taking a flyer on him and seeing if a change of scenery can get him somewhat back to what he was before. The Cubs were also rumored to be in on star free agent shortstop Carlos Correa before settling on Dansby Swanson to be their new captain of the infield. I like these moves for Chicago. I really do. As far as how the 2023 Chicago Cubs look right now, a lot of it is up in the air. You're not really sure what you're going to get with this roster. You of course don't look at it and say they're winning 100 games, but I don't know if this is a sure postseason missing kind of team. Again, lots of question marks, but when you look at the division that they're in, I honestly believe that they have at least somewhat of a decent shot. Nobody seems like a big threat in the National League Central. Beside the St. Louis Cardinals, nobody else seems like a team that can compete for the division. The Pirates and Reds, as much as I want them to, probably won't win, and the Brewers have seemed to be declining for a few years now. They don't have a great offense, especially with their best hitter Christian Yelich not hitting as well the last couple of years, so to sum things up, the competition seems seems to be limited for the NL Central in 2023, which can of course give the Cubs a decent chance. The Cubs went from the best team in baseball to basically a non-existent team over time. They had a great young core supported by older and talented veterans, but as time went on, started to regress, leading to their once great core to split up and go elsewhere. The Cubs may have lost a lot of their guys over the years, but the signings of Seiya Suzuki and Marcus Stroman last offseason, along with Cody Bellinger and Dansby Swanson this offseason, show that President of Baseball Operations Jed Hoyer wants to win. The 2023 Cubs, as they currently stand, may not be the sexiest team around right now, but I wouldn't totally count them out. I wouldn't totally count them in either, as they seem to just be a team that's just there right now. They don't pop out as a good or as a bad team, but more so one that we need to see play some games to start getting an idea of what they'll look like in 2023. Let me know what you think about the Cubs, thank you for watching, happy new year, and I'll see you in the next video.